everybody, I'm Brian. Let's go do some woodworking. <laughs> So I want to talk a little bit about how I make fretboards for fretted stringed instruments. Here I have a blank to make a fretboard out of. This actually isn't a piece of wood I would use for a fretboard, but I'm doing this for demonstration purposes. I have a small box that I've made for running the saw through, and I have a jig, a little template, with the scale length of the instrument that I'm making. So what's done here is this side that has slots cut into it faces down inside the jig. And inside the jig, there are some 23 gauge nails trapped in between the two sides of this. And those just happen to be the exact same width. Just holds it nice and tight in there as the fret slot. So this is not something that I've come up with. This is a jig that I've seen in books, but this is my interpretation of it. What I do is I flip it upside down, I then take my piece, and it's important to note on here that we have the nut marked on the top, and we have all the way down, I believe, to the 22nd fret cut on there. I take my blank, and I flush it up on the front where the nut is, Make sure that it's sitting exactly where I want it. And I've put two pieces of two sided tape to hold it in place. So that's now attached nicely onto the little guide board. And then you can use either kind of fret saw to do this. This is a push traditional gents style guitar saw, which saws the slot at the proper width. This little jig that I'm taking off of here regulates the depth of the cut, so I'm going to take that off. And this saw that I'm holding right now is a pull saw, a Japanese style pull saw, which is also set for the proper width of cut to put frets in. So I can use either of these saws and they go in between here and cut. And what I often do before I start is get some wax just so that it makes the operation a little easier. And I will apply a little wax to the surface of the saw so that it slides nicely in between the two pieces of wood. And I'm going to start on one end. I'm going to put my piece of wood in and run it across until it hits the first detent on my jig. Sit it down. And I'm going to adjust the depth of these cuts afterwards using this jig so that all of them measure the exact same depth. For the time being, what I'm doing is making a shallow cut that's going to lay out the distance between all of the frets. So now that I've made all my cuts, I can set up this saw with the depth gauge. And this will give me the exact depth that I need to be able to adjust the depth of the slots. So I'm going to visually line it up basically where I want it. And then I'll put these in here. This saw is made by Stuart McDonald. Uh, they're one of the big suppliers of luthery stuff that you can buy, all the different tools that are used in instrument making. And this seems to have been a pretty good saw that I got from them. That saw there came from Lee Valley, and I believe it's made in England. It's called a guitar maker's saw, but it cuts the same fret slot width as this. So to set the depth on one of those saws, you need to have a piece of fret wire. So let's grab a piece of fret wire. And you can buy it in this bulk form. 
and it looks like this when they cut it in bulk, long lengths. You can see the little teeth on there. So the fret slot itself is the width of the center of this tang, and then all those little teeth are what bite in, and they bite right into that slot there that you've made. So to set the depth, I want to cut to the depth of that wire, or the, the T portion, I guess, on the bottom of the T, the straight portion where the teeth are. And so I can just sort of visually line that up. I know roughly that on this saw, that just happens to be about what the teeth cut. So I set this up so that it's just the teeth cutting. And then now that I've scored all these on here, I can go back and just make sure that they're all cut to the proper depth that I want. And that depth stop, once it hits, won't let me really cut anymore. It'll stop making the sound of cutting. And now I know that fret slot has been cut to the proper depth for this fret wire. And I'll go through and I'll do that on the whole thing. Uh, now to lay out the scale length on an instrument, and because a lot of people have asked about that as well, you can get these rulers from any of the Luthery supply companies that have different scale lengths on them. And you can transfer those scale lengths directly onto your piece of wood to make your template. In this case, there's the template side. Or you can use the mathematical formula that you can also find in some books to lay it out. That's what I've done here. This is a scale length that I designed for an instrument that I built for someone that I quite liked. So this is 25 four inch scale length. And that's how you do that. That's how you make a fretboard. To make the templates that go into the jig out of plywood, what I do is I take two shims and set them against the nails that I have in the middle, which register into this, so that the piece of wood can slide freely from side to side. Take my plywood jig and I mark out, either with a knife or a pencil, very accurately the scale length on this piece of plywood. I slide it into the jig. You'll notice that the width of this piece is pretty close to the width of the jig so that there's not a lot of movement. Now once this goes in here, imagine this is a blank piece of wood with pencil lines on it. I take a nice bright light and I sit it on the center so that I can see down into the kerf of the cut in my jig. And if I look down into there, I'm able to see pretty clearly a very fine line as I look through down into the crack. And once it's lined up, I'll throw a clamp on it, I'll cut it, I'll move to the next line down, and I can see again very clearly if I look down through the crack. There it is. I'll clamp it again and make another cut. And by doing it that way, I can make a really accurate jig. Thank you.